Kaiser M3i versus Sunny 1709. Is the Kaiser M3i actually worth three to four times as much as the Sunny 1709? Today, we're gonna take a closer look at the $2,000 Kaiser M3i and see how it stacks up and compares to this budget-friendly Kaiser M3i look-alike that's called the Sunny 1709. I bought the Sunny 1709 for about $560, which was discounted from $700. Both of these bikes has a relatively extremely light flywheel located in the back of the bike. As you can see here, the Kaiser M3i also has the flywheel on the back of the bike and the mass is believed to be eight pounds on this bike, whereas the flywheel mass on the Sunny 1709 is a little bit over seven pounds. Additionally, the Kaiser M3i has this little lever up here uh, located by the handlebar so you can easily reach over and adjust your resistance uh, without having to reach down and use a traditional resistance knob like on some of these other bikes. The Sunny 1709 has a very similar resistance lever, although it is a little bit lower down and you do actually have to reach down to adjust your resistance. The Sunny 1709 has 14 levels of adjustment and they do kind of click into position as you make that adjustment. As comparison, the Kaiser M3i has 24 levels of adjustment and it doesn't click into any particular number. And with so many similar similarities in the drivetrain setup with the light flywheel located in the rear of the bike and the resistance lever being the same color and it also moves forwards and backwards to adjust the resistance, one has to wonder how do the drivetrains feel when you compare them head to head. After all, we are talking about the Kaiser M3i costing anywhere from about three times to four times as much depending on how much you can get the 1709 for. And in just a few moments here, I'm gonna hop on each of these bikes and compare them back to back, head to head, and share my thoughts and experience with you on what the max resistance feels like, what the mid-range resistance feels like, and whether or not you should actually spend four times as much money to buy the Kaiser M3i or if the 1709 is good enough. Spoiler alert, the M3i is definitely the better bike, but how much better is it than the Sunny 1709? I'll answer that question in just a few moments, but before we do that, let me show you a few other key similarities and differences between these two bikes. Starting up here with the little mini display area, the Kaiser M3i does have a display. On the Sunny 1709, there's also a very similar looking basic display, and this display gives you cadence, calories, and it also has your pulse, a heart rate monitor built right into the bike, but I have more on this in just a moment. Additionally, there is speed, calories, and time if you tab over, but one thing that we should note is there is no resistance number displayed on the 1709, and also there is no power output displayed on this monitor. Additionally, I should point out there is no place to put a tablet on the 1709, although you could definitely figure that out by attaching some sort of external mount, you know, like something like this. Taking a closer look at the Kaiser M3i display, you can see that there is cadence displayed in RPMs, as well as watts, your power output, which is huge, and also you can get your heart rate on this bike, as well as it also shows you the gear that you are on. You simply move this little lever right here, and it changes the gear from one all the way to 24. Also, the M3i gives you your distance in terms of miles or kilometers, depending on how you set it and your time. And it also tabs back and forth and shows you estimated calories. If you're finding the information in this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and any questions or comments you have, please leave them down below in the comment section. And the bike that I bought here has this little tablet holder right up here that you can set your smartphone or a tablet on here. So really the difference in what these displays gives you is absolutely massive. The Sunny really realistically only gives you cadence. That is like the only important thing that this bike gives you. Whereas on the Kaiser, not only do you get cadence, but you get your resistance number as well as your power output which is absolutely massive. I suppose I should take a moment to point out the fact that neither of these bikes plug into the wall. Both the displays run on battery power, so you don't need an outlet to ride these bikes. And in case you missed it in my last video, the Kaiser M3i also has the ability to connect up external devices and you can run uh, apps on here. So this will display also the same metrics that you see down there on the mini screen. As I'm beginning to lightly turn over the pedals here, you can see that the cadence is displayed as well as the power is displayed and the gear that I'm on, I can change the gear just by moving the lever lightly here. And also, in addition to that, 
you can see that it's beginning to build a graph for me there with my power output over time, as well as my heart rate. Coming back around to the 1709, these pulse sensors over here, um, they're nice in theory. All you have to do is put your hands on this area and it will give you your pulse readout up here on the uh, display. However, I have found the pulse display or the pulse sensors here to be uh, really just not um, the same measurements that the Scotch Rhythm Plus and my other heart rate measurement gives me. So in my opinion, I don't believe that these pulse sensors on the 1709 accurately display your heart rate. But in addition to that, not only do they not accurately display your heart rate, um, it doesn't give you any way to track that information for your rides. Now obviously you could just throw on your own heart rate monitor and log and track that information through whatever app you decide to ride with. So you know, if you do the Peloton digital app on the 1709, you could just use your own heart rate monitor and just completely ignore these pulse sensors. And while we're up here, let's take a quick look at the handlebar positions. Uh, pretty standard riding positions on the 1709. If you do not want to use these pulse sensors, they will kind of be a little bit, you know, just kind of in your way um, in this riding position here. But the big difference about this bike is it has drops. So, you know, you can get down in that kind of like road bike riding position as well as some of these other riding positions as well. As comparison, the Kaiser M3i kind of reminds me of like a butterfly shape where the hand positions on this bike are really nice and also the grip material on these bikes is like a soft rubbery kind of material. Um, it's really nice to the touch. I like it more than the Sunny 1709 material that is used on the Kaiser M3i. So on these handlebars, you do get kind of the traditional riding positions as well as they kind of extend out beyond that as well. And speaking of handlebar positions, uh, both of these bikes do have the ability to move them forwards and backwards. So here on the Kaiser M3i, all you do is move this little lever right here and you can slide these handlebars forwards and backwards and they do adjust quite a bit in terms of going forwards and backwards. On the Sunny 1709, you can also move the handlebars forwards and backwards simply by loosening this little knob right here. And these handlebars also have the ability to move forwards and backwards quite a bit, but probably not as much as the Kaiser M3i. This knob is in a very convenient and easy place to quickly and easily move these handlebars. However, I could see this being a little bit of a downside. You might consider this to be in the way, potentially, just a little bit. And as I mentioned, both of these bikes are four-way adjustable. However, the Kaiser M3i has more adjustability. For raising and lowering the handlebars in the Kaiser M3i, you can see that the holes are spaced very close apart, and there are, according to the numbers on the other side, seven levels of adjustment, but as you can see, there are actually more than seven holes you can click into. Comparing that to the 1709, these holes are spaced relatively far apart, so there are kind of big jumps in between uh, handlebar height adjustments. Now that's not such a big deal in terms of the handlebar height going up and down, but in terms of raising and lowering the seat, there is this ex exact same thing back here where the holes are spaced relatively far apart for raising and lowering the seat. So that is a little bit more of a big deal in terms of adjustability. On the Kaiser M3i here on the back, you can see the holes are spaced very close together. So you get not exactly micro adjustability, but in terms of having holes to click into, it is pretty good. Additionally, both these bikes have the ability to move the seat forwards and backwards. And speaking of seat, the seat on the Kaiser M3i is fine. It's not my favorite seat, but it is, um, relatively narrow and relatively firm. Um, it's fine, it's not the greatest. However, personally, I do prefer the Kaiser M3i a little bit more than this big wide seat that's on the Sunny 1709. I think actually a lot of people who are beginner riders would be very happy with the seat that comes on the 1709 because it is wide and it is even more squishy. So it makes for a comfortable seat to sit on. However, my preference is a more of a narrow and firm saddle. I'm sorry, there are actually holes you need to click into on the 1709 for moving the saddle forwards and backwards, but it actually doesn't really matter because up here you can move uh, the saddle along these rails uh, for micro adjustability if you need it. As you can see from a distance, both of these bikes have a very similar shape where it has that 
V-shape on the frame. As you raise the handlebars up, they extend out away from you. And as you raise the seat up, the seat extends away as well. The idea behind this seating method is when you lower everything down, it compacts so it fits a short rider. And as you bring the seat and handlebars up, it extends out so it fits tall riders as well. Also, both of these bikes have a SPD clip in on the pedal on one side as well as a cage style uh, pedal on the other side. Here on the Kaiser M3i, you can see it has the uh, SPD clip in on one side as well as the cage on the other side. So either of these bikes works really well for people who are more serious about taking their ride to the next level and clipping in, as well as the casual rider who just wants to use the cages. Off the top of my head, I don't remember what the maximum user weight is on either of these bikes, but check the description box below if you wanna know the maximum user weight. So really the big thing is how does the drivetrain feel on each of these bikes and what is the maximum resistance like on each of these bikes? So now what I'm gonna do is hop on each of these bikes and compare them and give you my thoughts and opinions on, you know, just how the bikes ride. So I'm gonna use my SPD clip-in shoes since both these bikes come with that option out of the box. And if you wanna see the adjustability for these bikes, check out my other videos. I have a review on each of these bikes individually that shows the max saddle height and minimum saddle height. They both have pretty good adjustability. The Kaiser probably wins though. So hopping on the Sunny 1709 here, starting out on minimum resistance. Minimum resistance is very, very light. Uh, basically just like you know, just pretty much a free wheel. The Sunny 1709 is comfortable to sit on. Um, it's a comfortable riding position. And adding on a little bit of resistance here. Let me check my cadence right at about 100. And the pulse, the pulse sensor on this thing, it's really just not that accurate based on my previous measurements. Just feeling the momentum in the flywheel there on medium resistance. Let me crank it back to a lighter resistance. So basically, it doesn't give me my metrics here, but like, I'm on one now. I, I know because I'm all the way up. Two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, you can like feel, on, feel quite a bit of resistance come on by the time you hit uh, resistance level six. And, Momentum-wise, it's fine, but let's hop over there and um, let me see how that feels in comparison. So hopping out over here to the Kaiser M3i, clicking in on minimum resistance here. There we go. Um, if you hear any squeaking going on down there, it's because the pedals on this bike need replacement um, or some oil or something. I bought this bike used and I think it is really used, like, Many, many years, this is a commercial grade bike. I get the feeling that this bike came out of a studio that got closed down probably this year. Um, but anyway, moving along here, resistance one, which I can see because the gear up here tells me I'm on one. Just kind of feeling it out here. It's just, you know, like, just like a free wheel moving along right now. Let me add on a little bit of gear. So I'm at eight right now out of 24. So that bike's out of 14, this is out of 24. So gear eight on this bike. Uh, the Kaiser M3i is a very smooth feeling drivetrain. Um, the way that this drivetrain feels under my feet and through my legs, reminds me a lot of like actually riding a real road bike. And one of the great things about this bike is looking up here at the uh, cadence and power output. So this bike measures power output and like measuring power is just so big in terms of being able to track your progress um, and really just do effective training. So even though both these bikes have a um, seven or eight pound flywheel, this bike somehow has more momentum. There's, 
the inertia, and when you get this thing turning over, um, the momentum somehow is stronger on the Kaiser M3i than the Sunny 1709. And I'm not sure exactly why that is, but this bike definitely just has like a better feeling drivetrain at low resistance and medium resistance. Look at the higher resistance. Now, let me get over there. So hopping straight back up and over here after being on the M3i and comparing it right away. I can just tell right away that the drivetrain on the M3i just feels better. And it's something that I can't really like put into words, but like this drivetrain feels like fine, you know? It's okay, it's good, but the M3i just feels better. And I mean, it should, right? We're talking about a commercial grade $2,000 bike compared to like basically $700 on sale, $550, $560 bike. Um, I would hope that the M3i feels better and it does. So mid range here, momentum and inertia, So this bike, it really just doesn't give that same like road bike kind of feel back through like the pedals and the drivetrain in the same way that the Kaiser M3i does. Now the Sunny 1709 is like fine. It's for the price, pretty good. Uh, on, on low resistance and medium resistance, um, I do feel like I like the feel of the M3i at low resistance a little bit better than the way it feels on low resistance on this bike. You know, I already said that though. So now let me crank this bike up more towards the maximum end of the spectrum. So one thing I kind of dislike about this bike is you don't know what resistance number you're on and I feel like with this thing clicking in, like it wouldn't be that hard to implement a way to give you a, a number up here on the screen. But if you can keep track of it yourself, and you know, another thing I guess I should point out is since it's like a lever, you can know like where you are roughly in terms of physically where it's at on like a resistance knob, turning a knob, like, you're not ever gonna know by turning the knob where you are. Whereas the lever, you can physically look and see where that resistance is. So anyway, we'll go one, two, three, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is resistance level nine. This is pretty heavy resistance, honestly. 10, 11. So this is actually pretty heavy resistance on 11. Let me go 12, 13, 14. So we're on max resistance on the Sunny 1709. And it's a pretty high maximum resistance, honestly. Um, I'm gonna have to compare it to the Peloton Bike Plus here in the near future. So, with the light flywheel, um, you know, this bike actually feels pretty good at high resistance max resistance. I wish it gave me my power output. So there's really no way for me to know what kind of power I'm putting out there. But what I'll do is I'll um, take a look at my cadence. So you have to be pedaling and it'll show your cadence. So I'm on max resistance. 
sitting down, and I can get this thing to about cadence of 36. So I mean, the maximum resistance on the 1709 is actually pretty strong. And the drivetrain, you know, for, for the price is honestly pretty good. Thinking that this bike costs like 25% or 30% roughly the price of the Kaiser, the 1709 is actually a pretty good value in terms of getting like a look-alike Kaiser M3i. Uh, but in terms of drivetrain feel, this bike's just not quite there in terms of how good the drivetrain feels uh, overall. So hopping back on over here to the Kaiser M3i. And yeah, like this bike just feels great. I, there's a reason why this bike has such a good reputation and why so many people love the Kaiser M3i. And really, I mean, it's just a drivetrain feel. Like, I kind of feel like I'm actually riding my road bike out on the road right now, whereas you just don't get that same feel on the Sunny 1709. So I'm on minimum resistance. Let me add on some resistance here. I'm on 10. Uh, cadence is 110. Power output is measured at about 110. So cranking it up to gear number 13. Power output is 160. RPMs are now 90. And quickly, that resistance comes on over here on this bike. Like I'm on gear 18 right now, and my RPMs are at like 50 with power output of 200. So let me crank it to max. So like now I'm on gear 24, which is max. And this bike has for sure a higher maximum resistance than the Sunny 1709. Um, so honestly though, in terms of max resistance, the actual amount of resistance that the bike gives you, both of these bikes are really good. So as you know, I was just over there on the 1709, um, and I really couldn't get my cadence that high at a comfortable riding pace. You know, I was at like cadence of like 30 or so. You don't ride a bike on cadence 30. So what I'm saying is, you know, I weigh 190 pounds, six foot five, and that max resistance in terms of like riding and doing an anaerobic workout, not doing like a leg press machine, 1709 I think would be sufficient for most, you know, intermediate riders, beginner, in intermediate, even like more advanced riders. So, uh, but the Kaiser M3i really has a much higher max resistance. And I know some people wanted to see um, how high I could get that maximum uh, wattage up to in terms of like a sprint. Um, I'm not sure if I'm quite warmed up enough for that yet, but I'll give it a try here in a moment. Um, but I just want to put this one on max resistance and feel it out a little bit, go back to that one, and then I'll come back here and maybe do a kind of like sprint and see what I can get that number to. Okay, so yeah, gear 24 in the saddle, RPMs are at like 20. I just can't even turn the pedal. It's at like max resistance on the Kaiser. All right, straight back over here for our head to head comparison. Moving along, minimum resistance. You know, when I first started um, putting these bikes head to head, I was just thinking like, no way, the 1709 can't be even close to the Kaiser. But now after like actually getting on them and comparing them head to head, like the, the 1709 is actually holding its weight, holding its own a lot better than I thought it was going to comparing to a commercial grade $2,000 bike. Um, it's really not that bad for the price. Sunny 1709 is pretty good. But yeah, max resistance definitely has, so now I'm at like cadence of like 60, Honestly, I think I'm probably putting out power of like 300 or more watts right now based on my experience. And that's, that's a lot. I mean, I can't hold this power for very long. So yeah, that's like cadence 50. Um, pretty good max resistance 
and drivetrain feel is acceptable on a 1709. Here on minimum resistance, I'll just uh, kick the pedals here and show you what how, it, how the momentum carries. So everything moves pretty freely. Pretty good drivetrain on the 1709. Back on over here, I'll kick this one here down at resistance zero. I mean, this one just has more momentum and inertia. Like, I can just tell that, you can just tell by looking at it, like the way it moves. So I'm gonna hook up the M app here and then do a little um, max power test on this one. Now, this isn't really relevant, but um, I just know some people asked about it, so I'll give it a try. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll see what I can do, maximum power on maximum resistance, which is not necessarily maximum power, really, you know? Like, everybody's gonna find their own maximum power at different levels, so really power is a, is a multiplication, basically, of your resistance multiplied by your cadence. So when the resistance is high, and the cadence is high, you're gonna have a really high power output, but it's really hard to pedal fast when the resistance is high, right? So, you know, it's kind of a balance. And, and most people, you know, you'll probably get that maximum power at like a medium uh, resistance, but let's just see, let's see what I can do here in terms of, uh, yeah, numbers, wattage output. Cadence is, 100 and I'm recording this all on the graph, which I'll show you here in just a moment So let me just push like 300 watts. This is about 3 320 300 Back it off All right, got a little spike on the graph there. That looks pretty cool. Look at the graph on the M3i So kind of like what I'm thinking right now is like If the Kaiser M3i is like your dream bike, it's like what you want to have but you can't afford it the 1709 might make sense to get your foot in the door and you know maybe down the road when you can actually afford it then you can sell the sunny 1709 and then buy the Kaiser M3i but the M3i is definitely the king of these two bikes all right so let's push that's 450 450 watts. I don't know what the resistance was on for that one actually. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is just crank it all the way to max and get out of the saddle and just see what I can put down for an instantaneous burst. I'm gonna get the pedals cranked up here. That didn't work out. So, okay, so I messed up. Uh, I turned it to infinity instead of 24, so I put the brake on. So, infinity is the brake, which is just past 24. So, I gotta be more careful here. I'll go to 24. Twenty-four. Cadence is sixty-three, sixty-two, sixty-four. Power output is like five eighty. So up here on the graph, it looks like power touched about seven hundred on the graph. Uh, we can look at max numbers in a moment, but that was quite an effort. Now I want to try again. 23, cadence is 83, man, so I, RPMs, like very max output for me, I can get to about 70 
and it pushes the wattage on this particular bike to 700. So if you take a look at the numbers here on the chart, you can see that power topped out right around 700. So yeah, looking at the metrics here in the post ride, um, on this little vague chart, you can see that, I don't know, power kind of falls between 600 and 800 there, like my max output. So just like over 700. And as you can see, the corresponding cadence there drops down significantly, like way down uh, when I tried to do those pushes there on higher resistance. Average power, 83 watts. All right, let me give you my summary of the Kaiser M3i versus the Sony 1709. Obviously, Sony 1709 is a lot more bang for the buck. You know, the Kaiser M3i is basically three to four times as much money. Obviously, the Kaiser M3i is the better bike. This is a commercial grade bike. You find this in studios and gyms. This thing is meant to, to last for years and years, and it can be ridden a lot, and it can hold up to many, many rides by many, many users. Sony 1709, this is, you know, your at-home fitness bike, and it's pretty good. It has a pretty good maximum resistance. Drivetrain feel is pretty good. M3i definitely has a better drivetrain feel. The M3i to me feels a lot more like a road bike. It simulates like just the way the power transmits through the pedals and the, the crank arms and just the way you feel when you're riding the Kaiser M3i is a lot more reminiscent of actually riding a road bike. Both of these bikes are four-way adjustable and they are both comfortable bikes to ride. I was a little bit nervous buying each of these bikes the way they have that V-shape uh, frame to them. I thought that they might kind of get me too stretched out and I wouldn't be comfortable on them, but that's not the case for either of these bikes. I find myself comfortable on both of them. So in terms of low resistance and medium resistance, the Kaiser M3i feels better. And you know, the Sunny 1709 is fine. In terms of max resistance, I think both these bikes have a good maximum resistance. The Kaiser M3i definitely has the higher maximum resistance. And you know, I think it's actually probably, if not the single highest max resistance bike I have out of all these bikes, it's, it's right up there with the Peloton Bike Plus and the Nordic Trek S22i. Obviously, obviously, the metrics on the Kaiser M3i are far superior. It gives you that power output, which a lot of bikes just simply can't do that. It's not exactly easy to do. Cadence is easy to measure, you know? Both these bikes give you cadence, and even if they didn't, you could buy that Wahoo cadence sensor. It's an easy thing to do. But, you know, you only get your resistance level on the Kaiser M3i, where uh, over here on this bike, it doesn't tell you your resistance number up on the screen. And since neither of these bikes have a uh, resistance knob, you can simply look at the lever and you can kind of see where you're at on the resistance level. But the Sunny 1709 does not give you power output, whereas Kaiser M3i, supposedly this bike does give you a fairly accurate power output, which, you know, this bike does not measure the power output in terms of a strain gauge. Uh, it just kind of gives you an estimate based on the resistance number multiplied by that cadence, which is the same way the Peloton Bike Plus does it, same way Nordic Track S22i does it. Uh, if you really want to get your accurate power output, that's when things start getting a lot more expensive. You need power pedals, which basically start at $400 for a pair of pedals. So if you want to see current pricing or if you're thinking about buying either of these bikes and you want to help support my channel, I have a link to each of these bikes below the video in the description box. You can click on that link and go check out what the pricing is, current ship times, um, and if you do buy through that link, it does help support this channel. And as always, I'm not trying to convince you to buy either one of these bikes, but if you are going to buy one and you want to help support the channel, you can do so by buying through that link. So the Kaiser M3i does cost about three to four times as much money. Do you get three to four times as much bike? Well, I mean, I guess that really just kind of depends on where you are in your fitness journey. You know, are you ready to buy a bike that's $2,000 or are you more of a beginner rider trying to feel out and see if indoor cycling is even for you at all? You know, are you thinking about getting maybe a Peloton bike one day and you just want to get your foot in the door? 
uh, with a good bike that is, you know, pretty good, but maybe not the best bike and something that you can just get on and exercise with. The Sunny 1709, I think, is a good beginner and intermediate level bike. Um, if you're looking for something, a more substantial investment into a more quality bike, something that's gonna last years and years and years to come and hold its value really well, uh, Kaiser M3i is a good choice. So thanks for watching guys. Browse my channel for other indoor cycling bike reviews and comparisons. Click that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video.